Hi folks, HR Funk here with a brand new midweek update and this midweek update came about as a result of a viewer comment that I received a couple of days ago. In the comment my viewer mentioned that he prefers to carry full-size handguns for CCW purposes and he was asking if I had any suggestions on how he might be able to do that more easily or maybe at least a little bit more comfortably. And I thought it's been a while since I discussed the topic of carrying concealed firearms and with all the new handgun owners out there presently, this might be a good time to revisit the topic. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about carrying concealed firearms, especially carrying full-size concealed firearms for CCW purposes. Now, a few years ago, I produced a video on carrying concealed firearms, and much of what I talked about in that video still holds true today. And I'll put a link in this video, so if you missed that one, you can go back and watch it. But in that particular video, I was talking about carrying mainly more concealable firearms, the smaller, more compact versions. Today, I'm going to be emphasizing carrying full-size duty firearms. Now, just for purposes of definition, when I talk about full-size duty firearms, I'm talking about firearms in the class of, say, the Beretta 92 or the 1911 pistol. So I'm not talking about your 10 and a half inch or 12 inch silhouette model revolver that you might want to carry with you. I'm talking more about the type of firearms we would typically expect to see someone carrying in the open in a holster. Maybe I should say holster class firearms. Anytime we discuss carrying firearms, there are certain things that we have to keep in mind with regard to our carry method. And these are the properties or components, if you will, that have to be balanced in order to have an effective carry method. And those are safety, retention, accessibility, concealability, and comfort. And it really comes down to sort of a trade-off between a lot of those things and balancing them just right to get an effective carry method for you. And the reason I say that is because many times if you have a carry method that is very good in one area, say retention, maybe you have a very good holster that retains your firearm very well, many times that will make it a little less appealing in the accessibility category. Or if you have something that is very, very concealable, it might not be quite as comfortable to carry. So you really have to balance all of those elements, and each one of them is extremely important. For example, if you have something that's very accessible but it doesn't retain your firearm and you engage in some sort of vigorous activity and it falls out of your holster and you don't have it when you need it, then your very accessible carry method is not something that's effective for you. It's definitely not going to help you out in that situation. So as I go through the different carry methods that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be doing it with the mindset that I'm trying to balance those different components with the carry methods that I'm discussing. Another thing to keep in mind is there's really not a one-size-fits-all carry method that's going to work really well for everyone. A lot of this comes down to your physique, it comes down to the type of clothing you normally wear, and sometimes that's dictated by where you live. As I record this, here in Ohio, it's mid-November. So from now until about the middle of April or maybe beginning of May, or maybe middle of May, or maybe end of May, <laughs> here in Ohio, we're going to be wearing outer garments, uh, winter coats, jackets, what have you. So it makes concealing larger firearms a lot easier. For example, with my Beretta here in just a simple waistband holster, if I add my vest, and it's now completely concealed. And as you can see, by just adding the vest, that full-size Beretta 92 is completely covered by this garment and it would be equally well covered by a winter coat or some similar garment. Now you do have to be a little bit aware of how you move because sometimes if you bend over for something all of a sudden your concealed firearm now becomes exposed. So take that into consideration a little bit with your cover garment but cover garments make carrying a full-size firearm much easier. Now what if the type of activity you're engaged in requires a lot of moving around and you really don't want to run the risk of that firearm being exposed when you're trying to carry it if your cover garment moves or what have you? This is where the various inside the waistband methods come into play because this method of carry 
covers up about two-thirds of the firearm and the only thing you have left exposed is the very back of the slide and also the grip. Now back in my younger day I did a lot of inside the waistband carry. These days I just really don't care for it because it's just not that comfortable for me. If you prefer this method of carry you really have to buy pants that are going to allow an extra inch or so in order for you to be able to conceal your firearm in an inside the waistband method. Now a lot of people will tell you that's not true and nowadays a lot of people really like the appendix inside the waistband. I still think you need some extra room in your pants. And if you like to, to wear pants that fit more tightly, this might not be a comfortable carry method for you. And my experience is if something is not comfortable, sooner or later, no matter how dedicated you are to carrying a firearm, you're going to stop carrying it because it really is a pain. Okay, so how about if you're okay with a cover garment, but you really don't want to opt for the inside the waistband carry, is there another means to carry your firearm that will allow better concealment, especially when you're moving around, than the standard strong side outside the waistband holster? Well, let's take a look at a few options. One method that has somewhat fallen out of favor over the years, but I still like, is the cross draw carry. With the cross draw, the firearm is turned or tilted at about a 45 degree angle, which effectively makes it shorter from top to bottom. So when I add my cover garment, it's covered very well and there's not nearly as much chance of me bending over and exposing it. Now it's still possible, obviously, if I lean over this way or something, it can still become visible. But I like this and it's also very nice if you're sitting a lot or if you're riding in a car a lot because it's very accessible. It's much more accessible, especially in a vehicle, than having a strong side waistband holster. And if you have a console in your car or a seat belt or whatever else, and you have to access your firearm, trying to get in around all that stuff and access it and then present it sometimes is going to be problematic. Whereas a simple cross draw, simply unsnap it as I did there, and you can present your firearm. Another method that's gone out of vogue over the years, but I still like, is the shoulder holsters. Shoulder holsters are very concealable. You can move around a lot, and unless you have some sort of a garment that raises very high, no one's ever going to see what you have in a shoulder holster. Now the garment may have to fit a little bit more loosely than some otherwise would, just to make sure that it's not tight against your sides, against your firearm and the holster itself, but otherwise, very good concealability, very comfortable, very accessible. The good ones are very safe. So these do balance a lot of those components of the carry method very well. And it's very easy to go about your day and do whatever you might be doing and not think too much about your firearm unless you need it, in which case, again, it's very accessible and it's right there for you. This also, just like the cross draw carry, works very well if you're seated a lot or driving because of the accessibility and the comfort afforded by the shoulder holster. One other thing to be aware of with shoulder holsters, particularly the leather shoulder holsters like my Galco Jackass rig here, is they can be somewhat pricey. I think this one ran around $200 when I purchased it. I like it. I love the way it looks. It's a great quality holster, but it's not inexpensive. The good news is you can find some other options for shoulder holster carry that are a little bit less expensive. I'll show you one now. The holster I'm wearing now was made by DeSantis and it's a model from back in the early 1990s. I don't think this exact same model is still offered but they do have something similar today and there are other manufacturers that make similar holster systems. The nice thing about this is it is so adjustable. For one thing, the holster itself because of the adjustability built into the straps and the holster and the nylon, it will fit many, many handguns. It's almost universal in terms of duty size firearms, and that's one of the things I really like about it. It also allows the double magazine carry on the other side. Now the magazine pouch is intended for double stack magazines, but even so, there is enough Velcro on there that if you were putting single stack magazines in, it would still hold them securely. So I really like this system. I cannot remember what I paid for it, but I've seen similar systems that are offered today, and they're somewhere in the $50 range. 
Um, I would say don't go real cheap on your shoulder holster system because you don't want something that's going to fall apart or wear out. But as you can see, I've had this one for about 30 years and it still works just fine. I've got my M&P 45 in there right now and there have been many, many, many other handguns carried in this same holster over the years. Everything from 1911s to various Smith & Wesson semi-autos to my Berettas to whatever, they've all worked in this system and I like it a lot. It offers all of the same advantages of the more expensive shoulder holsters in terms of concealability and comfort and accessibility and all that. So if you find a good nylon system that works for you, that might be something that's going to save you a few bucks and still work very well for you as a carry method for your full-size handgun. Now at this point, some of you who live in warmer climates might be saying, that's all well and good HR Funk, but I don't live somewhere where I can wear a vest or a jacket or anything else because it's so warm here, but I still want to carry a full-size handgun. How can I do that? Well, let's see if we can come up with a way that you can accomplish exactly what you want to do. So, as you can see, I've switched over to my Hawaiian shirt and shorts. And before any of you start laughing, I want to point out the fact that this is a Marine Corps Hawaiian shirt, complete with Eagle Globe and Anchor, and also the Iwo Jima flag raising. So stop laughing. In any case, if you're going to go about so attired, you're probably going to have to embrace the untuck it look. Essentially, my Hawaiian shirt here is taking the place of my cover garment, like my vest or winter coat or what have you, that I would be wearing in colder climates. Even so, my full-size firearm is fully concealed by the shirt, and if I need to access it, I simply reach under the shirt and produce my full-size handgun. And I have my inside the waistband holster right here in front. And the pistol is essentially in the same orientation that it would be in the cross draw holster that I showed you a little while ago. So even if you live in warmer climates and you wear lighter clothing all year round, where there's a will, there's a way. And if you want to carry a full size handgun concealed, you're probably going to be able to do it. You just might have to give it a little bit more thought and planning on how exactly you're going to accomplish it. Before I wrap things up in this midweek update, there's one more thing I'd like to cover. And that's a question some of you may have. And the question is, why wouldn't someone just go out and purchase a smaller, more concealable firearm rather than going to the hassle of trying to conceal a larger one? And I can think of a couple of answers for that. One is, maybe they only own one handgun and it's one of the larger variety. And they might not have the means or the desire to go out and purchase a smaller one. Another reason might be the larger handgun with its full-size grip and larger sights might be the one they shoot the best, so that inspires the most confidence, and that's the firearm they want to have with them if they find themselves in a defensive encounter. And either one of those reasons is perfectly valid. Not everyone embraces the idea of carrying the absolute smallest micro-compact pistol that's available. As everyone knows, the specific pistol that's carried and the reasons for carrying that pistol are very personal to the individual who's doing the carrying and someone may have perfectly valid reasons for the option that they've chosen. And that's the midweek update for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks, and until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.